when we inhale then the main uh, organ which is going to run this whole system of respiration respiration meaning when you take the breath in it's called inspiration and when you exhale out that's called expiration and this inspiration and expiration is actually being done by three major muscles one is the diaphragm second is the intracostal muscle third is the trapezius if these now when i say intracostal muscle then it's on the front side also on the back side because the rib is like a cage so there are these bones in the front and the bones in the back the floating one 12th is taking a curve inside so all together this whole structure the in between the ribs there are these muscles which inflate and deflate the rib cage it moves and actually when the diaphragm muscle intracostal muscle and the trapezius when you take the longest inspiration that your collar this uh, shoulder clavicular bone clavicular bone shoulders they get raised when you take a deepest inspiration that's happening because of the trapezius muscles so trapezius intracostal and the diaphragm three muscles major muscles are are working diaphragm is in a dome shape on its contraction it creates a space for the lung to span expand and when the diaphragm expands that is which gives creates that pressure for the exhalation and the so that negative pressure which gets created is all happening because of the diaphragm so if your diaphragm muscle is weak which usually it is because people don't practice asanas so all back bending postures strengthen your diaphragm strengthen your intracostal strengthen your trapezius muscles so the rib cage the frontal and the posterior of the lungs this whole rib cage moves like a harmonium the fan of the harmonium so the rib cage is moving like this the lung is expanding and deflecting inside so when you are taking the breath in it moves expands outward when you uh, expire the breath out then it moves inwards so this is the movement but the major organ which is running is the diaphragm right below the rib cage then the intracostal muscles in the rib cage and then the trapezius muscles same goes if your back muscles are weak you can't take a deep breath if your uh, thoracic region muscles are weak you can't take a deep breath and there, if there is pain anywhere as such whether lumbar or thoracic or the upper back you cannot take a deep breath hence the importance of doing the yoga asanas is like um how much so ever i might say it's still less the importance of asanas is great now to have a good posture you need a strong body for a strong body you need the asana practice when you do the asana practice then only you can sit stable stationary immobile that is neither your shoulder should move nor your elbows nor your wrist nor your knees nor your ankles nor your toes nothing should move everything should be as still as a mountain posture is the first and the foremost thing then comes the taking the breath in so this is a very important practice which i am going to suggest and that is count while inhaling so count 1 2 3 and then when you exhale you count double that is 3 to 6 usually the breath rate is like 2 2 seconds in and out but when you are in rage or anger or anxiety this gets actually much more faster 
In a panic attack, the person is breathing like a dog, a panting dog, who has run and is now panting, is now catching the breath. So if the anxiety is there, if the anger is there, in anxiety the breath gets suspended, which is again very bad, there will be lack of oxygen in the blood. So if somebody has like these bouts of anxieties happening, then if that person just simply changes the rate of breath, their anxiety will go away. So keeping the posture still, three to six. So sit still, spine, neck and head in a 90 degree angle, not moving any part of your body other than your uh, intracostal muscle, diaphragm, in the trapezes, nothing else should be moving. Keeping eyes half open, look at one spot. While looking at that one spot, try not to blink. I'm adding one more masala into it. And then you take in a long deep breath while counting the ratios. So if you are taking four count of three in, then out should be six. If it is 4, then out should be, expiration should be of 8, 5 to 10, 6 to 12, uh, 7 to 14, 8 to 16, 10 to 20, 25 to 50, depends upon. I would say your target is to reach 1 minute breath in and a full 2 minutes breath out. That should be the target. So you just see where you are standing at the moment. Now it might be just two second breath. And that too, because of the bad mind state, it might go into one second. And there are pauses coming in between because out of anger or sadness, you suspend the breath. So that creates more carbon dioxide in your blood. And for the gaseous exchange to happen, meaning oxygen is to be received in and the carbon dioxide from the body has to be moved out of the system. It requires a certain period of time, but if your breath is so shallow, this exchange won't happen proper. Hence you will have less oxygen in the blood. Hence you will have a hampered body system. It requires at least two seconds, but that's not enough. Sadhana is to increase the duration, longevity of the breath. So take it from three to six. Now when you exhale long, then you are waking up your parasympathetic system. But if it is just the you know, the, the breath is like too small and too shallow. Then what happens when you inhale this, the sympathetic works, when you exhale the parasympathetic works. And that's how the auto respiratory system is supposed to function. But if your breath rate is incorrect, then you will have a uh, very lesser amount of oxygen in the blood, more carbon dioxide. There is a lot of uh, residual air which totally can't be taken out of the lungs. It will always be there. But still we need to work on increasing the duration, the length of your inspiration and expiration. So work from three minute, three per, per breath Exhalation for six and do it for at least half an hour. So keeping body still, eyes half open. Because when you fully close your eyes just in the beginning, your mind is just a wandering, hopping monkey. It's just hopping from past to future to this to that and thinking about a million things which are useless. You can't do anything about what's happening in Ukraine or Russia or, or, or any state of India. You can't do anything. Nobody's asking your opinion. No politician, no prime minister, no chief minister. But your mind is just bragging and running and commenting and creating a nonsense in your own head. 
and then you suffer because of that nonsensical thinking. So sit down at least twice a day. Give time to yourself because this will improve not only your physical health but it will have a great impact upon your mind. So anybody who has any anxiety attacks or panic attacks should do it like you know you are taking your some medication pills that one in the morning, one in the evening. So you do this practice once in the morning, once in the evening. Best is to do it empty stomach and if you do it in the evening, then do it before eating your meals. Or if you have eaten, then give a space of at least two hours. Then sit down and work on your breath rate. So initial part, keep your eyes half open. Soon the mind as will begin to calm. Because when your eye pupil stays at one point, it's going to put an impact on the brain because eyes are the visible part of the brain. Eyes are very much part of the brain. So when we still our eye pupil, it will still the prefrontal brain where the active thinking is happening. That's why I'm saying keeping eyes half opened, doing the trataka and inhaling deep long, exhaling double amount deep long, do it for at least half an hour and then in between your day works, in between your chores which you are doing, just remind yourself, am I breathing correct? Because most of the time you are not breathing correct. So if you wish to change the quality of your mind, making it more pure, sattvic, quiet, serene, then work on your breath. The Yoga Shastra says, Chale Vate Chale Chittam. Whenever the wind moves, the mind moves. So if you balance the wind, if you balance the prana, the mind will get balanced automatically. That's the powerful, the most powerful statement which a yogic rishi has made through the scripture and has given this this zillions and zillions dollar worth statement and can be a beacon in the life of any aspirant who wishes to follow the yogic path. This very thing can be a life transforming technique. So do this twice a day and in between your works, jobs, duties, cooking, cleaning, shopping, desk job, remind yourself, am I breathing properly or not? Am I sitting erect or not? Is my diaphragm moving properly or not? How to check that? This I will teach some another time. But for now, sitting down for half an hour, Put an alarm maybe on your mobile so that you don't keep on checking the easy, how, how much time is gone. Just put an alarm and close your eyes like after half time, at least 5 to 10 minutes, minimum 10 minutes. Keep your eyes half open, do the trataka, do this exercise, the technique and then let your eyes be shut. If your mind is still wavery, thinking, very bubbly, open your eyes again. Do the trataka, still your eye pupil, do the technique. And then, eyes, if become droopy and want to close on its own, that's a good cue that now you can close your eyes. 